Test, test. Hi, everyone. I'm really happy to see you all in, uh, in person. Uh, it is finally a great experience to see you whole uh, and not just a part of you. And, uh, well, let's see if it works. And today's topic is uh, Manifest V3. Uh, so Edgar uh, started as a network level ad blocker for Windows, but now we make a lot of different products, uh, a VPN, an ad blocker, a DNS, and of course we make lots of browser extensions. It's not just an ad blocker, uh, it's also a VPN extension, an assistant extension for our desktop products, and so on and so on. So, uh, well, the good thing is that uh, I had an opportunity to take a look at Manifest V3 from different perspectives, not just from the perspective of a content blocker developer. And today I would like to tell you, tell you more about my experience with Manifest V3. Uh, well, and everyone says it's bad. You see, you open the news, you read, uh, well, the end is nigh, uh, no more ad blockers and so on. Uh, but, well, no one tells you how bad is it exactly. And today I will try to explain everything in detail and you will come to your own conclusions. But first, of course, we start with a history lesson because, well, uh, I love history. I should have been a historian. Uh, just in case someone from the audience uh, didn't hear about Manifest V3 and, I don't know, lived in a cave for the last years, uh, let me give you a quick explanation. So you, know, you all know what a Chrome extension is. The extensions platform was first introduced, correct me if I'm wrong, in 2010. Uh, and it was, it was a feature that literally everyone requested back, back then because uh, you know, Chrome was a great browser, and it is a great browser si still, but it was not as customizable and as extendable uh, as its main rival, uh, Firefox. And so, in 2010, hey, uh, the very first version of Chrome Web Store was launched, and the developers were allowed to extend Chrome's capabilities with additional features. Uh, this is when the, the very first version of the extensions platform uh, first saw the, saw the light, and no one called it Manifest V1 uh, back then. But for the sake of consistency, I will call it that way. Uh, so in Manifest V1, the extensions were rather limited. Uh, there was no possibility to control web requests. Uh, basically, they could only show an icon and run a JavaScript file on a page, uh, or, I don't know, create a new tab, and that was all. Not ideal at all, uh, but actually the very first version of Adblock appeared and worked with Manifest V1, without any web requests at all. And it was, it was enough uh, for this Adblock extension to become extremely popular. Uh, even though it was not ideal, it was working only cosmetically. Oh, I didn't see you. Uh, and without actually preventing loading of any ads. Uh, so in 2012, again, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the second version of extensions platform was introduced. It's not that it was that different from the first version. Uh, basically, uh, they just introduced the concept of, of a version and, I don't know, called it version two. So, makes sense. Uh, new APIs were added and one of the main additions was uh, web request. The API that allowed extensions to control and manipulate uh, web requests. And it was the turning point, uh, the turning point for ad blockers. Uh, since now, we could actually decide what is allowed to load and what is not allowed to load. And it improved the quality of ad blocking, uh, well, very, very uh, strongly, I don't know. Uh, and then the APIs were slowly extended and improved with years and years. Uh, but overall, the situation stabilized until 2018. Hey. 
uh, when Google introduced the new revolutionary changes to extensions platform that were called Manifest V3. And now we all learned that extension platform has versions, and well, uh, and one of these changes was so-called declarative net request API that was supposed to replace uh, the old web request. Uh, and it was heavily criticized. And I must admit that I was uh, among the people who criticized it. And well, I still don't think that this is good news for ad blocking. But how bad is it? How bad is it exactly? In order to understand that, we should first take a look at how the old MV2 extensions work. Uh, and here's how it looks like. Uh, briefly speaking, the content blocking extensions uh, download fil filter lists that contain, well, the content blocking rules. These extensions then apply these rules uh, when filtering web pages and finally Work's done, the internet is usable again, everyone's happy. Uh, technically, the extensions design uh, looks like this. So we ha uh, the extension consists of a background page uh, that runs privileged JavaScript in the background and a bunch of content scripts, one per frame. Uh, the background page runs all the time, it initializes so-called filtering engine, engine, which is built using the sad filter, uh, filter lists. And the main part of this filtering engine is a search index that allows to very quickly find rules for a given web request. Uh, the filtering engine is also responsible for uh, applying these rules. Uh, it, decides, it decides whether the request is allowed or not. It decides what kind of cosmetic rules uh, should be applied to a page, and so on and so on. Uh, now that we know well, how it looks in general, I would like us to take a look at the rules, because, well, these are the most important parts of a content blocker. And mainly, uh, Filter lists consist of two kinds of rules. Uh, one uh, we call network rules. Uh, they are supposed to block requests or modify responses, and they could, apply, could be applied on different stages of a web request lifecycle, before web request, after well, receiving headers, before sending headers, and so on and so on. And on this slide, you can see a, an example of such a rule. Well, but I will uh, will not dive into specifics here. Uh, and instead, I would like to introduce you the other part, the equally important part of content blocking, which is cosmetic rules. Uh, they are supposed, this is an umbrella term. It's not just about hiding elements, well, at least in my understanding, uh, despite the example is exactly about that. Uh, cosmetic rules are supposed to modify web page styles or web page behavior by injecting special CSS or JavaScript. Uh, so now that we know about these rules, uh, let's talk about filter lists. Filter lists are basically simple text files uh, which combine or different uh, kinds of uh, filtering rules uh, that in turn control how content blockers work. These filter lists, uh, they are maintained by volunteers and or uh, professional maintainers. Uh, and there are currently over 2,000 known lists and the number is growing. Remember this fact, uh, we will return to it later. Uh, how does maintaining filter lists work? It is basically, uh, for the most part, reacting to user reports and promptly resolving their issues. User reports may be about uh, a missed ad or a missed tracker, or about a website breakage, whatever. Uh, the maintainer's task is to solve this issue as soon as possible and like, push a new update. Uh, and one more thing about maintaining filter lists, which is also important to realize. 
is that it, it is actually a very hard work. Uh, you can take a look at the slide and see that in Edgard filters, one of, one of the filter lists, I don't know, powerhouses, uh, there are about 80 new issues solved daily. And this is huge, actually. So this is a lot of work uh, which is done. It is very important to, to then deliver this app update to the users. Well, because some of these 80 issues might be critical, and it happens every day. Now that we know how it worked in MV2, uh, let's talk about what will MV3 change. Uh, and it changes a lot. First, uh, a couple of words about, well, how I learned it. We recently launched an experimental MV3 extension, and this talk is basically based on our experience with it. And the first thing I would like to talk about is the architecture of an MV3 extension. At least this is how I see it. Uh, one short disclaimer. This diagram, diagram shows what we expect to have in the future because it has off-screen document uh, on it. And currently, it is not available. And well, in our experimental extension, uh, we just use a single service worker and uh, a bunch of crutches around it to make it work. But hopefully, with, uh, with the off-screen document, uh, it will be better. So uh, the MV3 extension has more parts in it. There's a service worker, which is supposed to replace the background page. Uh, the problem with service workers is that their lifetime is limited by a seemingly arbitrarily chosen duration of five minutes. And after that, it is getting killed. Uh, so it's not a good place to keep the filtering engine uh, because the initialization of this filtering engine is a heavy operation. And repeating it every time uh, the server is it's just too much. Uh, and why do we do still need the service, uh, the filtering engine? This is a good question because, well, now we have declarative net requests. Why not just use it? Uh, the thing is that network rules is only half of what we need. The other equally important half, uh, uh, the cosmetic rules, uh, we still need to run a filtering engine uh, that works with them. And the only seemingly suitable place to have it uh, in Chrome is so-called off-screen document. Uh, this is a new entity that works in the background and can outlive the service worker. Uh, well, and I have hopes for it. Uh, the network rules, uh, in turn, are now built, built into the extension itself in form of static declarative rule sets. Uh, the extension cannot change, the, uh, cannot change them in runtime. We can only change uh, which one of them is enabled or disabled, and so on. Uh, and a couple of words about network rules. You see, uh, historically, content blockers created some sort of a syntax for filtering rules, and every content blocker follows the same pattern. We can extend the syntax a little bit from this side or that side, but generally the idea stays, stays the same. Uh, declarative uh, net request uh, uses a different syntax, a uh, JSON-based syntax, and well, naturally we want to keep using the old one, so we had to come up with some kind of a conversion mechanism that converts the old syntax into the new one. Uh, because no one wants to interact with JSONs. Everyone wants to use the good old filter lists. Uh, it's not much of a problem. We did this uh, already uh, with Safari content blocking. Now we do this uh, with MV3. Uh, not much of a, not a big deal, but well, it, it's important to realize. And the filters conversion. Uh, this uh, mechanism, it actually produces two different artifacts for every filter list. This is a declarative rule set and a source map. Uh, and source map is a very important concept that well, appeared here. 
because as I said, uh, maintainers know nothing about JSON format. Uh, they uh, don't want to know anything about it. They want to interact with regular rules, and we need to have something that connects the uh, regular rules with these declarative rules. So this, these are called source maps. Uh, and regarding cosmetic rules, MV3 do doesn't provide any alternative to uh, cosmetic rules. And what this means for the extensions? Uh, we still require very wide and powerful permissions. So one of the goals of MV3 was narrowing the scope. But unless we have an alternative to cosmetic rules, uh, a declarative alternative, that won't be possible. We still will require well, all URLs, uh, permission, and well, everything you have. Uh, and also it means that we still have to run a filtering engine instance in the background. Otherwise, it would be too hard to quickly find uh, cosmetic rules that should be applied to this or that page. Uh, and a bit illogical, but we will, uh, we're getting back to declarative rule sets. Uh, just uh, to show you how exactly they are built into the extension. So extension manifest file uh, has a special section where you configure uh, which, which, which lists you, in the, uh, you include there. Uh, you do this on build time, and in runtime extensions can only enable or disable uh, the said lists. Uh, we also have dynamic rules that can be changed in runtime, but the number of these rules is very limited, so it's okay for hot fixes, maybe, but well, the usage of dynamic rules is rather uh, limited. Uh, at first, we thought that this is not much of a problem, that the review process for MV3 extensions will be more prompt and reliable than it was for MV2. You know, we will just upload a new version of the extension every day. Uh, but it seems that it doesn't work that way. You know, the review process still may take like a couple of days, and this is uh, not ideal. We need to deliver updates more often, and uh, that's why we need to talk about dynamic updates. And bad news, uh, you cannot serve differential updates to an MV3 extension. Uh, because the problem is that we cannot disable individual rules inside a static uh, rule set. So you can only apply a part of a differential update. You cannot apply the negative part. Uh, but there are good news as well. This is a work in progress. And I really hope that this functionality will be available soon. And I think Filippa from Egalia will be talking about that today. And please. Do not miss his talk. Uh, well, it will be useful. And finally, one more important thing. Uh, this is about rule limits. Uh, you see, Chrome imposes rather strict limits uh, on the number of rules and rule sets in an extension. The current limits, uh, I must admit, are much better than they were in the very beginning. So there's a guaranteed limit of 30K rules per extension. And there's also a limit of 300K rules shared among all extensions. And right now, it is very hard to say, is it OK or not? Uh, because if you run just a single content blocker, this, is, this, sounds to be, this seems to be OK. But if you run, for some reason, many content blockers, uh, and users tend to do that all the time, so they, uh, that's the, their usual pattern. Something is not blocked with their current ad blocker. How to solve it? Of course, install another one. And, and then another one. And then another one. And then it just, it, it's uncontrollable. Uh, and uh, that's why it's rather hard to predict what impact these limits will have and whether they are OK or not. And finally, service worker and friends. Uh, when Manifest v3 was announced, 
what we feared most was declarative net request. So everyone was con so concerned about it. But in reality, it appears that the real main source of pain for every developer uh, was actually this move to service workers. And I honestly suspect that declarative net request is actually just the consequences, uh, just the consequence of this move, and uh, well, and that's all. Now we're uh, in a situation where when two different approaches uh, to uh, to this move exist. Uh, Safari and Mozilla push for using so-called limited event pages, which are which is almost the same as the old background page, but with a few benefits, since it can get killed, uh, but only when it is not used anymore. Sounds like very logical. Chrome team insists on service workers because, well, they will tell you. Uh, and in order to cover the other issue, uh, the other use cases, they plan to implement a new type of a background page called off-screen document. The difference is that this document doesn't have access to extension APIs, but at the same time, it does have access to DOM APIs. And it can communicate with the service worker, and it can, it can outlive it. Uh, and as an extension developer, of course, I would uh, probably prefer limited event pages because, well, you know, I have enough headache <laughs> with other things in MV3, so, well. Uh, but honestly, off-screen document makes sense on paper, and, well, let's see how it plays out. Uh, I, I'm not ready to criticize it too much at this, at this point. Uh, impact on filter lists. So I think that filter lists and filter list maintainers might be the main victim of MV3. Uh, what happens to them? How will MV3 influence the work of filter lists maintainers? Uh, let's take a look at three points. Uh, the first one is debugging debugging filter lists. Maintainers need to have tools to debug their lists and check new rules. Uh, in MV2, every content blocker provides such a tool. For instance, on this slide, uh, you can see the tool that Edgard provides and, well, uh, Adblock, QBlock Origin, and well, we all provide th this kind of tools. In MV3, debugging is much more complicated, mostly because the maintainer now is required to use an unpacked extension. So basically, it means you should go to the repo, clone the, uh, clone the extension, build it yourself. And consider this, a maintainer may need to check the new rule with several ad blockers. And this means that these ad blockers may have different build systems. Uh, their main branch may, might be out of sync with what you have in the, in the uh, Chrome store. Uh, and all this uh, combined uh, makes the whole maintaining process, the debugging process, much more complicated. And the probability of an error uh, is much higher. And I really hope that this limitation can be either lifted or maybe f there could be a better way to, uh, well, to, allow main, uh, to allow users to get access to the debugging interface. The second point, uh, this one is not for browser developers. Uh, this one uh, is more about us. So uh, rule syntax, it doesn't change. This means that uh, we will be using the same lists for all extensions, regardless of uh, whether this is an MV3 extension, an MV2, or I don't know, a desktop product. That's why we developers need to provide maintainers with a way to control which rules are used in MV3, MV3 extensions and which aren't. And fortunately, there is already a mechanism that can be used for that. It is called preprocessor directives, and it is supported by Edgard and by uBlock Origin. And I really hope that other content blockers 
will also support it because, well, I think that it is very important at this point when we have a, such a split. Uh, and finally, third point, uh, and I would, I would like to talk about limits again. So Chrome imposes limits on the number of static rule sets uh, that can be included into the extension. You can only include up to 50 rule sets and you can only enable up to 10 rule, uh, 10 rule sets. Uh, now combine this with the fact that there are over 2,000 known filter lists. How are we supposed to choose the chosen ones? Uh, what will motivate people to create new lists when all the slots in the browser extensions are already occupied? What will they do when their custom list does not fit the dynamic limit anymore? And there are several things that can be improved in this regard. And the first thing is obviously increasing the limits because, well, why 50, why 10? And I hope that if we present the real use cases uh, to the browser developers, they will listen and increase it. Uh, well, a little bit. I, I'm not asking to set it to 2,000, OK? <laughs> so uh, the second point is that we may need to start thinking about consolidating the most power, uh, popular lists. It's not that I suggest merging everything right away. Uh, I don't think it's possible. And I even think that every ad blocker may do some kind of a consolidation on their side. I don't know. Uh, merge uh, easy list, ad card based filter, merge easy privacy, ad card tracking protection, and uh, well, in a single rule set in Chrome, for instance. But anyway, we should at least start considering that we are doing the same work uh, three times, at least three times. And finally, the dynamic rules limit, another point. It might be okay for a casual user that doesn't, that is not interested in installing custom lists and so on. Uh, but we really would love to have it, to have an option to increase it. My, maybe f through Chrome flags or whatever, uh, at least give us something. <laughs> Don't make us recompile Chrome on our own to increase it. Uh, and finally, a couple ideas for MV4 as well, using uh, the opportunity to pitch these ideas uh, right now. Please listen. <laughs> so first, declarative cosmetic rules. Uh, one of the goals of MV3 was having extensions with fewer permissions. And this is a noble goal. And this is not a bad goal, but uh, well, you should give us the instruments. And the missing instrument right now is declarative cosmetic rules. Uh, if we had it, uh, we would achieve two things. Uh, first, ad blockers with no extra permissions will finally become uh, a possibility. And this fact alone, the, this possibility, it, it is a great motivation to provide such a product to the users because users, they do want to have an ad blocker that cannot see what they do. I see this in Safari. So in Safari, for instance, uh, in Safari, we have, uh, we have a separate model that uh, has extended white permissions. And we have a base core model that only uses the declarative rules. And lots of users, uh, they opt just to use this uh, limited model because the other one requires lots of permissions and they're happy. They know that we cannot see what they do. They, well, they are safe. Uh, and we're happy to provide them with this opportunity. And well, just give us the tools. And the second point uh, is debugging tools. And again, this is from my Safari content blocking experience. Uh, the closure of net request, just like 
Safari Content Blocking API uh, does not provide any convenient tools for debugging rules. And no tools means unhappy maintainers, which means worse filters for your browser, which means unhappy users of your browser. Give us something. You have developer tools. Think about it. Well, maybe there could be some integration between DNR and developer tools. It will mean a lot for us. Finally, so how bad it is after all? Uh, and I don't have a definitive uh, answer. So here's what I think. It is not as bad as we feared it will be. It is not as good as we want it to be. It can be improved, and it is improved. Just a short story. Uh, last night I was working, and I saw that uh, Devlin makes a comet. Uh, just, well, it, it's nighttime. Uh, and I think, OK, he must be in the US. We'll be talking uh, online. But no, he's working. He's working on improving it right now. E even, even right now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, I think that everything will be forgiven if this MV3 is what's required to bring extensions to mobile. Uh, well, like, immediately. Uh, so that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I will be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Andre. This was really interesting presentation. I definitely learned a lot. And uh, yeah, do we have some questions in the audience? I would expect some over there all the way. <laughs> Throw it. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm not sure what's the relationship between MV3 and getting extensions to mobile. Why didn't you have extensions on why, mobile? Why do I think that this is? Uh, you see, uh, on mobile, apps are just like service workers now are ephemeral, and they can be killed at any, at any point. And uh, it, well, no one ever confirmed it. <laughs> so no, no worries. But uh, it just uh, appears to me that this sounds awfully like, Connected, so ephemeral service worker, ephemeral apps, extension developers, be ready that your app, uh, your extension can be killed anytime. That's the same words I hear as a mobile app developer. Be prepared, your app can be killed anytime. Uh, well, that's why I make these parallels, and I want to believe that this is true, but they will never confirm it anyway, so don't look at them. <laughs> Okay, there's one From over here. Behind. <laughs> yeah, just curious, how much um, code are you, have you been able to share between your existing Manifest V2 version and Manifest V3? Um, we had to share a lot, uh, but uh, mostly because the, uh, uh, we still need to run the same, the old filtering engine for the cosmetic part, so the filtering engine is basically shared. And uh, we had to build uh, the conversion mechanism, but it is also based on, the, on this engine code because we need to uh, create instances of network rules and they are already parsed and we can use their properties to convert into declarative syntax. So uh, the code sharing is considerable, uh, but it's not that we just switch the version in the manifest. No, it's a lot of work anyway. I'm, yeah. I'm, back, I'm back with you. Nope. Um, is there a perform any performance differences between V3 and V2? Uh, we didn't do any, uh, any uh, uh, benchmarks, uh, mostly because we believe that the current version without off-screen document will work awfully bad because uh, the service worker is recreated all the time and the initialization process should be 
uh, well, repeated. But when, uh, when we have the off-screen document, we will probably try to check it. But anyway, e uh, you, we shouldn't like, t uh, believe these tests right away. So the Chrome score is changing. Uh, the whole idea was to bring the filtering uh, closer to the network, uh, network service of Chrome so that there was less uh, uh, inter-process communication so that they could make the decision faster. Uh, and I'm not sure, well, maybe we should do that in a year when the old code is no more, when there is no blocking web request. Maybe we should, maybe we can run benchmarks already, so, well, if you can comment. Remember to speak right into it. Yeah, good? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of it will depend on the, the other extensions that are installed. So we're only as fast in a network request as the slowest extension. Um, so if we were to have a setup where we have one MP3 extension with declarative net requests where everything can be processed more synchronously and we don't have to wait for that extension process, then we can do the, that comparison. Yeah. Um, but even then, a lot of the, the challenge becomes that it is often an apples to oranges comparison because of the, the differences in functionality between the MV2 and MV3 extensions. And so I, I agree with you that we should do these tests once once everything has kind of settled yeah, 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 down yeah. a little bit and we, we have some, some more... Uh, In a couple of years, later. because now the tests won't... Uh, yeah. It's not... We, we don't have the end product uh, yet, which is surprising, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, but once we have, probably this is when we should do the benchmarks. Okay. I think somebody already has the cube ready there. Maybe there. Andre, thank you for your talk. It was uh, excellent and really interesting. I was curious whether you did any testing of l trying to load, um, reach the limits of the filter list. We did. Was, you did. Uh, did you hit the, how quickly did you hit the limits, or did you? Uh, we, it was just uh, synthetic tests, because with, with existing lists, uh, with what we preloaded, uh, since we cannot enable more than 10 rule sets, it's rather hard to reach this uh, 300k limit. Uh, with, with the regular setup, I have a, I have a, by the way, I have a slide here uh, with the rule limits. Here it is. And this is a slide from my computer from the version that I'm running with six lists, and as you can see, uh, there are only 100k rules used uh, from the limit, and well, as long as uh, there's just a single ad blocker, uh, the, the yeah. limits are okay. But the, I, I mean, one of the things that you talked about is consolidating the lists, yeah. which I think will happen because you can only have. Well, a I hope so. Number, right. But then that's going to massively increase the number of rule sets. Isn't it? So I, I, I'm not so sure because really? the lists currently, they share a lot of rules. There are a lot of duplicates. And uh, again, we do a lot of work to remove redundant and obsolete rules. And the lists still have a lot of them. Uh, and uh, well, Fanboy41, he made great job cleaning up easily that reduced the size yeah, like twice. Did. And the same thing can be done uh, with Edgar filters. We can, I, I'm not so sure that consolidation uh, will uh, run into this uh, rules limit. But uh, I'm, see, I'm seeing it as a necessity because of the rule set limit, which is rather low. Yeah. Uh, which prevents, well, wh why, why I think that this is important, because uh, how it works, uh, basically. So there's a power user, and he's not happy with the list that, well, we have on the internet, and he creates his own little sl list. Calls it, I don't know, web, ultra, very magic lists. I don't know. Uh, and after that, uh, he starts like adding new rules and shares this list on the internet. People start using it. Uh, the list grows bigger, 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 and then we have uh, well, we, and then we have a bunch of lists that are called fanboy lists, and then fanboy manages is a list, and well, that's how the community works, how it grows, and if we take it from the community, it will well hurt. Uh, it will hurt the overall quality, the growth uh, of the filter list. That's what I'm concerned about. Me too. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, the one thing I'm worried about with the consolidation is that it creates a sort of single point of failure. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. So, and it's more work for rule sets to filter up to actually being used. Yeah, that's why I'm not, I'm not just saying that we should like merge everything right, right away. No. We will always have this uh, add block a specific like add-ons anyway, whichever, how, however we consolidate. Uh, but I still think that currently we do a lot of like double work, double, the same things uh, in in different places. You know, we could we could avoid it. Thanks, Andrew. All right, one more question over there. Hi. So you hear me, right, uh, Andre? This is Mera. Um, I'm moving a little bit towards the user side. So I read this uh, report that came out that um, it's um, the Manifest V3 compatible version is out there. How is the user response? Uh, do you see many downloads? Do you see many installs? How are they taking uh, it? We don't promote it actually uh, a lot. So there are a couple of thousand users that saw, the, saw it in the news, so like 5,000, something like that, maybe 10, uh, that saw it in the news and installed. The extension rating is rather high. Uh, so it's like four and 4.6 or something like that. Uh, regarding the feedback that we had, uh, it was uh, controversial. So some people say, oh, cool. Uh, so it's not the end, I'm still using Chrome. And some say, uh, Edgar, why are you doing that? Boycott, boycott them. So <laughs> let, let's, oh, well, switch to Firefox right, right away. And never, never do any extensions for Chrome. And so it's hard to communicate with such people, but uh, they, they exist. They exist. They, well, a part of them still use Chrome, by the way. So I'm not, I'm not sure how it works in their, in their brains. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, that's it, I guess. Cool. A follow up question. So, did they uh, re recognize some? problems in using that particular version of the Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, the main problem with the extension right now is this, uh, uh, the service worker itself, because we don't use the off-screen document, because uh, Devlin works on it right now, maybe what right now, like <laughs> literally. And uh, well, there are some issues here and there, some like ads flashing because there will, there's a visible delay because we need to reinitialize filter and engine. But we hope that it will go away. So once once uh, the situation is stabilized, once the, all the APIs that we need are implemented, uh, we really hope that uh, the quality it would it will be rather good, so uh, almost the same as we have in MV, MV, MV2. The main concern with MV3, what uh, whatever what, what many people talk about, and me included, is that with declarative network rules, uh, the uh, there it will be much harder to innovate to create new types of rules. And we sometimes still do that. Uh, even well, even even this year, I, I think a new uh, a new modifier was implemented in network rules, and uh, this is partly true. Uh, again, on one hand, I see that Chrome team they work, uh, they do a lot of work. They uh, listen to some feedback, and some things get improved. Uh, also, I see that it is possible to bring a pull request, and maybe in a half a year, a year it will be merged. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. You need to, like, to it's hard to commit to Chrome. Uh, but at the same time, MV3 will be used not just by Chrome, but by Safari, by Mozilla. You know, we will do the same work. Uh, we will, uh, in order to innovate into declarative net request, we will probably need to do the same thing three times in three different browsers. And well, so yeah, this is true. Declarative net request is worse than imperative approach for our purposes. It could be, uh, it could have, uh, there could be an explanation. But anyway, as, an ad, as a content blocker uh, developer, I think that uh, it will slow us down, unfortunately. 
Not right now. In a couple of years. Do you think that um, Manifest V3 will make it harder for you to distinguish your ad filtering engine from others and to compete on that aspect? Uh, you know, uh, I don't really believe that uh, ad filtering engine uh, is the only uh, important thing uh, we need to distinguish ourselves. <laughs> ourselves. I, I actually think that most of the browser extensions uh, filtering engi engines are pretty much on the same level at this moment. And the fact that half of this engine now will be uh, declarative net requests uh, doesn't change much. They were pretty much the same. They will be pretty much the same. Well, I don't see much of a problem for us as a company here. All righty. Any final questions for Andre? Now's the chance. Okay, questions seem to have come to a stop. Um, then, thank you, Andre. I really loved your pitch idea for MV4, by the way. That was <laughs> a good trial here. Some relevant Thanks audience so is listening. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you.